I was uh, davening last night at a certain minion of uh, working people who get together in a mall. I happened to be passing by there and I had to take care of something. I down with the minion and right after the minion, they started singing It was a beautiful thing to see. Uh, people of all denominations, black hats, uh, kippa shuga, no kippa, uh, Teimani, uh, Sephardi, Hasidish, Ashkenazi, Shivish, Nari Shivish, everybody together, just joining in together to express that this time of year is different. And when other comes, it's the time of Simcha. Marvin Basimcha. Marvin Basimcha. <coughs> and Rashi on the Gwana Mitaina says, Mishanichnas Adam Marvin Basimcha. Why? She may nisim him. It's days of miracles. Uh, Purim and Pesach. Purim and Pesach. And the question is, okay, Purim is coming, Pesach is coming. Pesach is another six weeks. A lot of people don't look at Pesach as a time for Simcha. I remember one time I had a neighbor, and it was a few days before Pesach, and he was like crying. He says, I hate Pesach. I hate it. He was like beating his couch, like like uh, giving it Laman test 39 makas, you know, and just be crying. The fact that Pesach was coming and cleaning for Pesach was such a uh, torturous event for him, unfortunately. But this is the fact, is that before we get out of Mitzrayim, we have to go through Avdus, slavery, and the cleaning for Pesach, and making matzahs, and and getting ready. It's it's it's, it's Avdus. But in the end of the day, Rashi is teaching us, right? Rashi, in, in his terse, prophetic way, is teaching us that when other and when other comes in, it's ushering in, as it were, Purim and Pesach, which are days of miracles, and that's the reason for ex, um, additional joy. And we have to understand why. Why days of miracles? The fact that Purim and Pesach were days of miracles, well, that was many years ago. Okay, so it's true, the Ramchal says that every year we go through, the time is not a continuum, it's a cycle, and every year we go through, so we have, we are re-experiencing days of miracles, but what is about these days of miracles? Most of us are not having, having open miracles. Although I do remember one time when I was trying to um, find the shul to adopt our kolol, I spoke to um, the rub of a certain shul. I said, Rabbi Travis, if we adopt your kolel, it will be an open miracle. You know, so many people came to us. And it was, um, I was a little bit upset from that. I believe it was in Nissan that this happened. It was Days of Miracles. And I, um, I went to visit a friend of mine. Dr. Yeshua Fox, living in Lawrence. And he told me, Rabbi Travis, you had open miracles before. What are you worried about? So he said, you know what? You're right. I went back to the shul and I spoke to a few people. And Baruch Hashem, they adopted our kolo. And the Rav said, okay, I guess open miracles happen. Right? But so, what's special about Adra and Nisan that we have extra simcha? I believe we could, exp- we could explain as follows. That, look, that the Baal Shem Tov said that wherever your mind is, that's where you are, right? And if your mind is on miracles, then you're closer to miracles. The difference between a miracle and nature is a miracle is a high revelation of Hashem's uh, glory and his, his open interaction with the world. Really, we, we think that miraculous is out of the norm and that nature is the norm. And really, it's just the opposite. The norm is miraculous. Hashem has created a whole system of filters, as it were, to block the norm, so we should have nature in this world. But nature is not the norm. The norm is miraculous. And the Chasim Sofer, in fact, says, in the base of Migdash, where we were living with the norm, it says that people would bow down, would stand, it was crowded, and they would bow down, there was plenty of room. So we think, okay, standing up when crowded, that's the norm. It was crowded, there was millions of people here. Right here in this area. But when they bow down, that was a nace. Says the Chazim Sofer, no, no, no. Bowing down, when a person was mishtachave, and he humbled himself to Hashem, that was the norm. Because there is no nature in the base of English. And when they stand crowded, that was the, that was out of the ordinary. Hashem made it crowded, so when they bowed down, they would appreciate the fact that the miraculous was the status quo in the base of English. So that's something we have to appreciate. In 
in, in other and Nisan, we reconnect to the norm. The norm of Klai Yisrael is miraculous. And this is what Ramban says in Parshish Bo, that a person doesn't have a chilek in terms of until he believes that everything is miraculous. This is the norm. And all year long, we're, we're taunted, we're disturbed, we're, we're distracted by not the norm. To think nature is not the norm. Right? Mother Nature, she's a wonderful lady, but she doesn't really exist. There's only one thing that exists. It's Eino Mavada with Hashem. So in Purim and Basel, we come back to the norm. We, we revisit the status quo. And that's a great joy. Because it's this whole guise of Teva. Right? It's this whole, it's this whole um, scenario of nature, as it were, which distracts us all year long and causes the greatest anguish right? when things go with a natural uh, way. Because when things go with Hashem, then you just have a cornucopia, a plethora of blessings coming down into our lives. And just, we're filled with great, great joy just to experience Hashem straight and not in a way which is um, watered down and filtered and just, you could say distorted, but this is what Hashem wants. Hashem wants us to have this um, almost warped view of reality and to understand that it's not really the truth. The nature is not really the way things go. And therefore Hashem put us in Mitzrayim and He took us out. He decreed that the whole Jewish people should be annihilated in times of Purim and it was overturned miraculously through prayer. And so too we got a Mitzrayim, Egypt, miraculously through the Ten Makos and the prayers, as the Sforno says, of the Jewish people. Right? Everything happened through prayer. Everything happens. The way that a person taps in to the status quo of miracles is through prayer. So let's all make a special effort during these special days of Adar and Nisan to improve our prayers and to connect more to Hashem and to realize that there's a special, there's a special uh, uh, avira, a special um, air, a special something, Juno uh, Kwa, something in the air that helps us to connect more to miracles during this time. The time of year, whether it's the Ram Chal's cycle of time, we're revisiting back to the time of Adar and Nisan, whether it be um, our mindset, which is more focused on miracles, um, whatever it is, whether it, it's our, the Avdis, which we're accepting ourselves, the slave we're accepting ourselves during this time of year, <coughs> whatever it is, it's definitely a special time. It's definitely a time when we can reconnect connect to the status quo. Let's all do it. Let's strengthen our tefillahs. Let's strengthen our understanding that things are miraculous and not get distracted by what's going on around us, which looks like nature, right? Which is all guys. It's not really the truth. The more we believe it, the more it will happen. I was speaking to a young man last night who has very difficult nisyanos. Very difficult. And I said, you know, it all depends on your way of thinking, right? The, diff- the nisyanos you're having, right, are being sent to you. They're being, they're being delivered to you. Hashem is giving them to you. The more you can understand that you don't you can overcome these decisions. Hashem gives you the challenge and He gives you the cure. And the cure is the great confidence, right? The Baal Shem Tov said, it's more important to believe in yourself than believe in Hashem. And a lot of people have challenged me on that, right? And I have to say that I never saw it inside. I heard it from my Rebbeim, right? I should try to find the source. But many things from Baal Shem Tov were written down by Talmidim. But the idea is not that I believe in myself, but I believe that Hashem will be with me more that I believe in him, the more I'll see Hashem. And this is what it means to believe in yourself. Not, you know, the um, secular view of self-confidence. It believe, means that I'm of the Kuchabrihu. I'm a slave of the Bore Eilam, and the more that I enslave myself to him, the more that I subjugate myself to his will, the more he will help me in the most miraculous ways. And to believe that strongly, not to get distracted by things that are going on, even if you're sent the most difficult challenges, but they can be overcome because we have such incredible help from such a high source. So let's hope that Hashem reveals to us very quickly. We're going through hard times in Israel. A lot of things are happening, whether it be the government, whether it be the persecution from the Arabs, whatever it might be, it's a hard time. But it's all a soin in a moon. It's all a challenge to see if we're going to stand up to the plate, as it were, and to not get distracted with what's going on just believe purely in Hashem, and then He'll bring the gula. And the merit of this belief, it will come soon. Amen, Cain, T.A.
Pensando.